Welcome back to the Event Lighting Channel. Welcome back to uh, episode two of uh, Thomas Copper showing his uh, workflow. Uh, in the last episode, he was doing all the backend stuff, all the setup stuff, all the, uh, the things you need to do to set up his show file. Uh, in this episode, he's going to show us exactly how it works, uh, when he touches the button, how all the faders work, how all the uh, sequences get assigned, how he sorts everything into worlds, and how that actually works in, in, in a practical sense. So uh, I hope you're going to stick around for this uh, second part of Thomas Copper's uh, programming session. And uh, by the way, if you know Thomas uh, from the internet, he is in a lot of uh, different internet forums out there. Uh, he is answering a lot of questions, and uh, we have a Discord server as well on the Event Lighting channel. If you're not a member yet, there's a link down there in the description where you can uh, sign up and uh, be a part of it. It's totally free, and uh, you can, uh, if you're lucky, get help from Thomas if you have any Grand MA3 related questions. So uh, let's get back to uh, Thomas and his show file here in the Grand MA3 Show Me Your Workflow series. Yeah, and before... Before I go to my show view, which I think everyone is mostly interested in, um, one of my most important views is this view, which makes empty. So if I want to have something, I just can have an empty view and store whatever I want in this view. And yeah, it's working. That's why I have an empty view, just to make the screen empty. So, jump now to my show view. And as all my other views, everything is already set up for me like I want. I have one color view. I have a position view. I have a basic view. I have a smart view. I have an Amstrad view. And I have the executor views. And um, basically, it do all what is written there in color. Everything is inside which belongs to colors. And as I said before, I'm working with worlds. Um, so everyone else is using the color picker like you have 10 different kinds of groups. So you have 10 different kinds of rows which you are using. But I say, why I need so many rows when using even if I have 10 groups? I have only five rows. So every row is basically doing the same. So every row has one sequence behind um, with from all 10 groups the colors are in. And I can decide individually, I want now this first row to set that it's for all colors. So if I change a color here, um, I will change now to uh, another view. Uh, so you see now uh, deepens, I think, in the corner. Yeah. Yes. And yes. so if, if I change the color here, everything is going to white. If I say these two fixtures should not be integrated, it goes to, um, because I didn't select it somewhere else, let's say I do it here. So now it's blue and I can change it to red. So. Um, I will go here again to white, and you see everything will change to white again. So, uh, but just a question. So, this is this is something you will do during the show, or is this something you will uh, you will do before the show to integrate maybe some floor package or anything? That that's during the show. That's during the show. That's live work in the show. I can decide which row should contain which fixtures, and mostly. I'm using one row with all fixtures. And then let's say this group should contain all the moving lights um, or only the first group of moving lights. Let, let's do it like they are individual. So the first thing should do only the fixtures in the background. Um, yeah, this are the fixture in background, which is group one. Group two are the fixtures all um, in the ceiling, which is here. So I can just go to blue. And then I think, ah, oh, no, I want to have magenta. And for all the fixtures, I just press magenta. And as you can see, for sure, there is at the moment going a swipe in. This is controlled by this button here. I can 
just control. I can even turn it off. And then if I say I want it all in white, everything goes white immediately. I can change the fade time to everything. And I say, OK, let's do the fade. And it's fading smooth into it. And it makes no sense to have a fade time. Oh, let's say a little fade time. And let's go from left to right. And uh, yeah, it's going now from left to right with a short fade. I can do it on a different side without fade. Um, what do we want to have? We want to have yellow. So we do it from the different side. It's working really quick and easy, and it's fine. I'm sorry to interrupt, but uh, I need guests on this show to make it happen. So if you are a GrainMA3 programmer, I would love to hear from you. Uh, you don't have to be skilled. You can be brand new. That's fine with me. You can be working with theater. You can be working with tours. You can do corporate. That's, that doesn't matter. As long as you want to be a guest on this show and we can uh, look into your show file the way we are doing today. So uh, please uh, sign up for the list below and uh, I will be in touch with you. So uh, let's, uh, let's continue. But what will I do if I have a fixture which doesn't have RGB or CMY? I have a problem if I want to have a color swipe with a fixture with, which have a, a color wheel. I can disable a group of fixtures by using this. So for example, um, let's do it. Uh, yeah, left, right is good. Uh, the group, this uh, fixtures in the ceiling have a gobo, uh, have a color wheel. I just switch this group off, and if I go there, they just jump to this color without any swipe. This is what these buttons are doing. So I can say individual in the show. I want now that some fixtures don't do a swipe; that they jump directly in. This is what is there doing. Another point is. Are these two groups which looks individual? This is a so-called color bump. Um, here I selected now all groups. They should be in color red and do a strobe. And if I go to uh, this color bump, it looks like this. Everything is going red and is strobing. And uh, okay, I want that. Um, the strobe, mm, let's say the strobe should do a swipe from left to right, and it's the same will do with the color. So I can just type this, and it's going like this. It's really nice busking stuff, I would say. Yeah, it is. And it's I have really two cool. versions. And, and, and it, it's really, really uh, uh, versatile and... and, and and you can basically do anything. Yeah, and the biggest advantage now in MA3 really comes out here. Um, I will show the sequence how it's built. Um, or better, I should just say here. Again, here, I have selected every of my group because it's world-based. It's color red. It's fade zero with a swipe from left to right. Same with strobe with swipe from left to right. And the sequence itself it's done really simple uh where it is where it is color bump color bump here is my sequence uh, i think it's this one yeah it's just one um queue which has group one with a preset of the color and an MA trick. The same is going if I go down, I have the same group one with a preset for beam, which is a strobe function with an MA trick. It's done really easy and quick. And because I use uh, at the moment uh, this um, delay function inside, which the swipe is a delay from left to right, it has a duration of 0 0.5 seconds. Uh, and the star in front means um, the speed is double because this sequence is, of course, um, controlled by a rate master. Why I use a rate master in my show file? Um, on, maybe I, 
I will go back and explain what's the difference here between a rate master and a speed master. The speed master is a master which uh, reacts on every effect or phase I use inside a sequence. And the rate master um, is controlling the timing into a sequence. I said maybe before that in my show file, I use uh, 60 BPM as my standard speed. So 60 BPM means I have 60 uh, changes per minute, which every second is a change. And all my timings of my sequences are one second. So if I have a show, in a show a speed of 120 beats per minute, I know that the rate is two times, and so it means 0 0.5 seconds for, for the length uh, of one beat. And uh, the, sp the speed of a speedmaster is 120 beats per minute. So the speedmaster will be at uh, 120 beats per minute because every half second is coming a beat. And this is why I keep everything to one second. So all my basic timings in my whole show file, um, I will just do it a quick way, set the speed to one. And if I show you the same group now, um, I think it was here in two. Uh, if I, you see it here, it's now one second. So the base is one second. And uh, does it, is it in this, I have to see if it's built like it should be, Colabam. Uh, no, it doesn't do it. Um, so the, the sequence is already stored with, with one second. Yeah. This is, so everything, so even this timing is one second. Of course, the fade timing is not to one second, it's done to four seconds. But if the rate master is going to 120 beats per minute, this four seconds are only two seconds long. Okay. And uh, these two um, bumps are, in, are equal. They are only, I can use them only individual. So I can say the one should have, let's say, uh, I see here's a mistake, haha, -ha. because it should be a it should be a go to, not uh, I don't want to step through. I want to have a go to. Okay. Um, I go. Let's say from. Oh, let's let's do it fancy. Let's do it now, fancy. Uh, okay, it's different. Um, I change the color to blue because at the moment we are in white. Okay. And let's say this is this here's the first one and here's the second one. So you see now that the strobe is coming from the complete different side, which is really a cool view. It looks really ah, fancy. <laughs> and so I can can just tap here from left to right, suck. And um, let's say uh, I need the speed. Uh, let's make it quicker. And it makes more fun. So you can see, tuck, you go over and you do this, and you can do really the crazy stuff, and it's going in the BPM speed you tap in. So it's really it's cool. Definitely an EDM show, that's for sure. Yeah, um, I really must say that the show file I could not use in uh, a classic show. Maybe no. for rock it it would work, but for classic not. Yeah. Um, and so the timing is over all show files. So the whole show file has this timing inside. So everything is based on one second and 60 BPM. Another point here is um, a color effect generator, uh, which is laying on a fader. So it is defined by this three rows. I can have uh, a two-step phaser or a three-step phaser. Let's say I have a two-step phaser. I choose this one. I have a phase of 0 to 360. Not, no wings, no groups, nothing. And I can go in. And it's doing this two-color phaser. 
And then you can change the color by, by changing the reference. And I can color, them. I can change the color here to yellow and it's doing yellow now. It's working and I can say, okay, I want my, that's why it was set up like this. I want my special stuff, my, I call it the French look. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, so I'm right now on thinking to, to put another um, thing inside, which makes like that I can put a strobe on one of the steps so you can really do cool things. Then. Yeah. So and of course I can change the, as well. Yeah. So I can do a, a wing inside here. So it's changing on the fly. That's very nice. It's very clever done. Yeah. So this is this. I can just... Uh, use a fader to just do it a, a halfway, or I can just use it as button to, to jump into it. And yeah, this has an individual speed fader because I noticed um, that it doesn't correspond and really nice looking if I use the normal speed fader, which I use for dimmer effects. So this is basically the uh, color view I have. And of course, I have here this lazy function like uh, show control player off or show control one, two, three, four, or master. Mostly it's standing in this position. In off. In off, correct. <laughs> because I have this here. Yes. <laughs> uh, the position view is, um, yeah, it's, it's just done really basic because I have position, um, a top position and a low position. Um, I think I programmed only two. Let's say it's jumping in. No, it doesn't do, so let's do, no. Ah, perfect. Um, I have two rows, QA, QB, and um, I have a position fader. It's like this here and I can change between two positions, but I didn't set up the position. So maybe I just show you, um, I can just update one group and do the position like, like this. And this group should be like this. So, okay. And I store this position in the preset. It should be up. Okay, and now this should work. Uh, hold on, I need to uh, start it again. Um, one, one, two, two. And now I can fade between the two positions. Okay. And the magic behind this is, and why I have two rows. Um, let's see, first, at first, this doesn't do something different than copy preset down to preset of Q1. This does copy preset up to preset of Q2. Nothing more, nothing less. And I have two rows um, because I have now a visual overview on which preset is using in which position. If the fader is down, I know that the top row is activated. If the fader is up, the lower row is activated. Maybe I should change it. Makes more sense. <laughs> but I'm used to this workflow. Yeah, as long I as must, it works. Con I must confuse different uh, operators if they use my show file, that they don't <laughs> understand why I'm doing something. Yeah, it's a little trap. Yeah, and, and then I have, uh, besides this, only really four movements like pan, tilt, circle, and eight. That's all. And as you see at the moment, uh, let's activate the circle function and you see nothing. That's shit, nothing happened. Okay, what happened? Really easy and simple. Oop. I have a fader here to start this and for the others as well. So, so nothing that's all. happens when, when, when this fader is not up. 
Yeah, correct. And I have another fader here, which I can control both at the same time. So it's really nice, easy workflow. And uh, yeah, I can change it here. And let's say I go to a pan tilt. It, it of course, jumped to this position, yeah. but this is a normal behavior. Um, I think in circle, it's best to see. I can change the wings to zero. It's doing an, an circle and I can do it parallel. Then it circles like it should do. I mean, all this operation you don't do when the effect is on. You you no. change it once and then start the effect. So this is done really nice. And I'm prepared for maybe future views. I have a button called direction. At the moment, it's empty. Because there is you no direction. direction. <laughs> you can change direction by using the face on a different side, but I don't use it for position right now. No. And of course, here I have as well a fade time and a delay time, so I can uh, have a swipe between everything what I want. So, but this I leave to 100%. Uh, uh, I hate this. So, this is all what it's doing here. And here is a special function, um, which is like drop and break. Uh, let's say I do the drop and it does similar switch off the lamps, stops every move, stop every phaser. And if a drop is coming, I go in again. Okay. I don't have this on this screen. I have this normally on my X keys. Um, Yeah, I will. I will explain uh, how my uh, executors are set up after I show this, and this is just um, to control on on the screen as well. So here I do the setting because I can say, don't switch off the lamps. Complete just uh, at a break. Just go to 50% brightness. This can also be done, and I can say for sure, let's do it with a fade time and how long this fade time will be. And I'm thinking about adding a delay time as well to it, so that I can make a swipe over this whole yeah. view. And then I have this, um, how should I say, a uh, flyout here. I can say the flyout should work with uh, group one and two, which are the moving lights you can see right now. They can go from down to up, from up to down, from uh, inside to outside, from outside to inside, from top outside to whatever, how I programmed these positions before. I can say I do it with wings and so on and so on. And then the fly out, um, I do the master down. And then I can start the fly out, which is for sure not working because, ah, because uh, I didn't, set up these positions. I'm sorry. Ah, okay, fair enough. Ah, no, no, it's, ah. Maybe I can just show how quick it is done to program it. Yes. Yeah, so um, I have this top position. I want to see something, okay. I will start from this position, which is a down position. Um, so I should press so much. And I do the same there, so, oh. And um, then I have this up position. I will store it to the up position. So it's done. It's just a question, why do you have uh, uh, two for down and two for up? Um, because I'm too lazy to use uh, a mirrored, uh, how to say, uh, a matrix. Um, oh, okay. no, but the real point behind it, maybe I don't have this up and down position. I can have it in different uh, sizes or different positions. I can even make them looking equal. So okay. now um, it should work. Uh, let's say, oh, do a group of two. I don't know if it's working now. I have to start this macro at first. Uh, I have to start the macro first. Sorry, I will just start the macro, but it's done quick and I'm finished. Magic already happened. Choose my groups again. Um, say this, say this, say this. And here we see it's 
going like it should be. And I say, okay, I want the phase from zero to 90 and I want no wings and it's working how it should be. Can you control the speed as well somewhere? I can control the speed as well, of course. Uh, rotary knobs. Yeah, yeah. Do you find uh, do you find uh, use for all the rotary knobs? I mean, you do, but uh, I think there's so many rotary knobs uh, on the console, and I'm I'm like, I could I could find use for some of them, but uh, but not necessarily all of them. Ah, oh, I have it very useful. Um... Yeah, maybe it's now a good time to speak about my executor, how I set them up. Um, I should go to wing one. And here I have um, normally set up because I come again, I'm using all time uh, worlds for it. So I have only five executors for dimmer instances. And I can say, um, oh, wait a second, I have to switch it off to that someone can see it better uh, so and here at the moment uh, the fixtures are working fine so and i have really a function for the rota uh, rotating knobs here to scroll through this uh, queue list so i don't know what is on the first one let's see yeah so as you see it's working right really nice and um, i use um, the fader and the first rotary knob for the first sequence or for the for one block of sequence as you can see here and the second is belonging to this which is just at the moment like full or I can choose the sinus and it's going the sinus over so this is what is what is doing it I think it was full yeah um, and I think here, ah, now here are some different lamps on, and all this is controlled by worlds. And I have in my basic view the selection which group I want to have for which fader. So I have five faders and I have five group sets. And here you can see group one and two at the moment is on the first fader. I can also say different. Um, I just set it up that on fader one is group one, on the fader two is group three, uh, two, and on fader three, group three and four. So, and if I go here now, I have only group one, only group two, and group three and four. And that you simply change by, by changing the selection in there, as you showed us. And I can just change it in this uh, basic tab here by changing this selection in here so i do it like this and now if i go back to the faders i have all on and the other thing as well and now here only this one which makes me done it really quick yeah so if i want to have i can also say i think it will not look good but let's do it i will select all and i have on my fourth fifth fader all fixtures on so everything <laughs> is bright up now yeah and of course everything is doing the chases as well yeah so everything is incorporated into all the effects you can select yeah so this is how this is working and then um here comes normally all the five um moving faders but here it's individual for group one group two group three group four and group five but this will change i'm just working on it uh, to have also the same with choosing it over worlds that i have um different versions than maybe on the faders but this is something so this is, i'm working this, on this is one of the things uh, as i talk to many of the uh, programmers about on this uh, show here is that all the show files first of all it's it's uh, as personal as a fingerprint and second of all it's always evolving yeah and then below this i have uh, some buttons i uh, they are not set up at the moment um but you will see what what this is doing uh 
in another way later. Um, I have so called busk things, which is the thing which I work most in. Um, I can, I will just show quick uh, what this busking stuff is doing. And um, it's like, like this. And all these functions I have on these buttons below. Uh, oops, this was not what I wanted. Or uh, here I can do like this. This is then on these buttons I, I have below. Um, but it's a little bit different. So here I have um, everything what is on the left side, everything what is on the right side, everything what is outer, inner, center. And I have to change because this is my setup I use on an on PC where I have a fader wing and a command wing with 10 faders each. So and on the other hand, I have then every odd, every even, every up, every down, and all. So I can just do it here. Yeah. Uh, then on this second bank, I have this, uh, oh, I better should switch on that we can see something. We want to see something. I have the position fader, which is just basically, um, it's not a secret. It's as well done with recipes and as well with um, a matrix. It's just doing the same group, preset, a matrix, and the same here, group, preset, a matrix. That's all. Simple. Uh, oh, yeah, I, wa I was here. Um, and then I have a playback master. Uh, I have two playback masters, let's say. I have one playback master for pan and tilt options and one playback master for dimmer options. Um, now I will start again. Um, ah. Do it like this here, and this one should also do like this. So, And now I have it on two faders. So if I want to have a blackout, I have to move two faders down, which is really nasty if you are on a big show yes. if you have five faders and ah oh, i have only five fingers and i need also the movement stop i just have this dimmer master put it down and everything is off so how does that how does that, is, is that set up is that just a group master or is it doing some no. uh, hard this stuff? is this is indeed like it is labeled here. It's a master. Um, you have playback master. It's just a playback master which control all the dimmer. So um, these sequences uh, have, oops, uh, edit settings. The sequences are assigned to a um, playback master which is called dimmer. Uh, so they are okay. assigned to the playback master dimmer. And everything what is inside this or what, what is assigned to this playback master can be controlled from this fader. And all of my buttons which I use, which have intensity, are assigned to this uh, playback master. So everything what is color, uh, what is dimmer, I can push down. Expect, for example, the front light. I will not put on a dimmer master. No. And now maybe comes this question, um, because a playback master, uh, this, hold on, this makes me nervous. I'm not on a show. Um, this playback master only work with intensity. So if I have a color, it changed nothing. If I have a position, it changed nothing. And now maybe someone want to ask, but if it works only on intensity, why do you have a playback master for pun and tilt? So I will show it, um, oops. I have to go there again and start this there. I can see it so. And if I use this playback master, I can put it down. But as I said, a playback master only control dimmer intensity. Why does it control now this? The magic behind this is that, I have to go back, that this two groups, because you see that the groups are still at 100%. Yes. This 
um, groups are calling, or, or these faders are really controlling the sequence, and the sequence contains the phaser of move. But behind this is um, a stomp fader. This stomp fader just stomp all relative values. And a move, for example, is a circle with um, 20% relative values. The stomp just pulls down the relative values to zero. So it stops all the moves because it's 0% relative now. So, so just a question. So it's a stomp, but on a temp fader, so you so you can, yeah. can adjust it the yeah. way you want. Ah. Yeah. And um, the stomp is for sure as well a position information and can't be controlled from a playback master. But um, when you use the stomp, the stomp is when the fader is up, it is stomped. But you want if that the if the fader is up, then it's at one hundred percent and not vice versa. Yeah. So you need a so-called remote fader, and um, there I have a remote fader, and this remote fader is just basically a dimmer channel, or not a normal dimmer channel. I will show in patch. Um, it is um, here. Um, of the preset? No, it was preset folder. Uh, it is an inverted dimmer channel. I can show this uh, fixture. I created a dimmer which is just different than on the other way. So normally it is with 0%. Uh, no, can you see it here? No, you can't see it here. Um, Yeah, here you can see it. It goes from 0 to 255 in DMX values, but the physical is going from 1 to 0. And the normal dimmer channel is going from 0 to 1, because if you have the value... upside down. Yeah. This is what it's doing. So uh, I just created this to have, if I have the fader up, it's at 0%, because then I want it verse wiser. And because this is a dimmer channel, a dimmer channel can be controlled from a playback master. <laughs> That's the magic why I use a playback master here. Yes. So and if you see... Hours well, and channel. hours and hours on this uh, show file. Yeah, I spend a lot of time because I have to reprogram everything what I used in MA2. But the basic construct is really done in MA2 and it's doing nearly similar. Yeah, and then I have, and as you can see here, I have some um, Speedmaster just on the encoder, and that's it. And I have, of course, haze and uh, strobe speed. Yeah, yeah, that's it. And as you see, there is a lot of free space on all the executor and buttons. So it means you can do really compressed work with less buttons, but with full functionality. Yeah, it's an but, amazing uh, file, I would say. It's just done a lot of brain work inside. So I will go back to zero and uh, yeah, let's do what is, or well, let's say this is mostly the thing what you are doing in in normal shows, a normal way, and everyone program it like it normally, and you have a straight workflow. You could even do like. Uh, colors on, on faders. You can do gobos on faders, everything. And maybe someone will ask, but here is only position and it's only dimmer effects on, on faders and executors. What happened? What, what are you doing? How do you get gobos? How do you get presets? For this, I have uh, my so-called um, smash and M steps. And uh, this is basically... Um, Maybe I, I should say, I have in my basic view, I can just switch on gobos and zooms and all this. I can switch it here and I can do the zoom like, okay, let's do it all at 100%. This is possible to do as well. Works really fine and no problem with doing it. So, but uh, yeah, 
this is just for lazy thing and if I for show start if I leave the fixtures in, in such a position. But I have a so called smash burst and M steps. Um this is basically doing as well copy a preset on another one. This master preset is stored in a sequence. And here I can say, for example, I want that only the fixtures here in the ceiling, not the one in the background, should um, have the colors red. Okay, I decide the world should be these fixtures and it should be red. And I want to control left and right side individual. I say left and right. Then I have this buttons um, here and I can do left and right and tap okay. it in the tempo I want. And now I think, okay, I want to be extra cool because I want that this color is coming um, with, uh, ba -ba -bum, with a delay. Uh, I can say, okay, the color get um, a swipe from left to right. So, and I go again to my buttons and it's going with a swipe. <laughs> so it's, cool. um, I have to stop it again. Okay, um, now you say, uh, We'll switch it off again, and uh, I have to think all the time where the buttons here are. So, and now you think, okay, but if you leave the button away, it stays red. I don't want that it stays red because I want that it uh, goes to white again. So I have a function inside here which says it's a, a two-hit step, and so I have now, tuck, and the next one in, it goes off automatically again. And if I tap in a speed, it don't go off again. It just stay. And after a while, it goes off again. <laughs> and if I'm lazy as well, I can say, ah, oh, I'm so tired of typing all the time. I want to have it as a chase. I go here and say, it do a position delay. And the strobe comes afterwards. That is really, this is really, really cool. That is really cool. Yeah, it is. And now I can say, okay, I have this fixture there, but I want that the fixtures on the roof are doing it. What will I do? I change the fixtures on the roof and say, okay, now you do it. And now the fixtures on the roof are doing it. And of course, the speed is low, so I type it a little bit faster. And it's going faster, so but I must do in this speed. And as you can see on the timing, it's done all in the correct way. Yeah. But maybe here it's working now in the right way. Uh, let's try it out. No. But it's it's just really the problem only of of the color. I don't know why it's the problem of color. Hmm. Really interesting. Blue, blue, even in red. Yeah, I think the problem is there is um, a problem with the release. Oh, I'm the wrong one. I want to have this. Thing. Okay. So this is what I can do. And I have three individual stuffs with what I can do it. But right now I have only left and right selected, so I can't show it in all the other possibilities. Okay. And... Yeah, this is what I set up in here. And I have another step forward. Um, wait a second. Uh, I think I can show it here. With the burst, it should work now as well. Burst left and right should work. Uh, this button here. Yeah, here you see it's working with the burst as well. Yeah. But only left and right. The others are not programmed yet because the uh, groups are empty. Um, yeah, I have the so-called M steps, where you can see it on my X, uh, on my um, X keys, four buttons below. So four buttons below, and here I can define. I want that on the left button is on are only the right fixtures. Okay, I want that group three also 
is with the right fixtures and oh no let's do it with the left with the left one that i get a little bit more confusing and here then the right one and um i want that they go minus 10 um yeah and i want that the zoom is doing um a zoom out to 50 percent yeah and uh, the position should come with a swipe dimmer i don't need because i can switch the dimmer off here if i want okay now it's working and if i press the buttons ta, it's working super <laughs> It's, it seems really simple, but, uh, but really the logic simple. behind it is kind of crazy. Yeah, and and this is, as I said before, it's just copying one preset to another, change one world to another. Okay, behind this here is as well a little bit work in groups. It um, basically it, I have a, a symmetrical group with all. If I select this group. Um, it create another group with this position. Uh, it's it's a little bit tricky to explain, but it's working after you get in. It's, it's working really simple. Yeah, I think now I'm done with my... Ah, I wanted to explain about the flyout, how I created it and how this... Or maybe I should play a little bit more. Yeah, playing a little bit more is cool. <laughs> because to show this with a little delay of the color of 1.5 seconds and the zoom after one second gives then a complete different look. So if I do it like this, it it looks really amazing because you can do with the timing so many cool things and uh, with these delays and all, it's... It's really great. Yeah, but it's just it's just so crazy to see how many options you have on one button. Because I mean yeah. the old school way of programming, you, you would have to you had stuff on faders and, and these two faders are odd and even and these two faders are odd and even on a different fixture. But here you have so many options on the same button. So basically you do your selection with uh, with one finger and you do your your steps uh, with the other hand, which is which is really really cool. Which is kind of the and here I can thing. make, yeah, and here I can make this go release as well, so I can hold on this button as long as I want, but it switch off after a specific time. Yeah, and I see that in group one is a timing issue because I think no, it is assigned to it. But anyway, group one is not really working like it should be. Oh, no, it's working like it should. But anyway, group two is faster, 0 0.6, 0 0.6. Hmm. Good question. I have to find out why it's a little bit different. Yeah, yeah but yeah. there you can do a lot of, lot of things, and it's fun to play with. Yeah. Thanks. So coming back to my flyout. See, it's working super, it's smooth, fine, super. Yeah, um, let's go and switch it off. Okay, uh, if you have this, um, MA standard templates, the flyout, super. Yes. It's working, of course, like it should do. It's working fine, it's working smooth, everything is good, but. You can't change the positions. Hmm. You have to do it yourself because you see, you have absolute positions, relative positions, timed positions. Ah, this sucks. I don't want. Um, I wanted to create my own way. For me, the size is too big and uh, not flexible enough. And it doesn't look like I want. So I decided I create my own fly out and basically this creator is really built really simple i have a user variable with the fly out speed uh, i can change it individually here if i want that the flyout is really really slow i put it to five 
or to 10, whatever. However, I want that the base speed is really fast. I can put it to 60, but for a flyer at 60, BPM is too fast. Then it does nothing else than um, make preview on, which is similar like blind, but it's in a different programmer. So uh, you have the preview programmer and you have the ordinary programmer. Um, and why I use the preview programmer is, if I have something active in the normal programmer, it does not be overwritten by this. Yes. That's why I use the preview programmer. Clears all everything, selects all my groups, which contains um, dimmer and position attributes, let's say. Yeah, dimmer and position yeah. attributes. Then calls the, at the preset dimmer zero and the preset position fly out low. Next step, because you can just take the next step, it say dimmer should be 100 and the flyout position is high. And these two flyout positions are not the posi positions I program because um, I can program the positions anyhow I want. And I think I must change a little bit in this macro um, that it's really universal then. Um, but anyway, I just switch between two positions, this position fly out low and fly out high. And equal, what is in this position is then used. So I can exchange by copy one position to fly out low and the other position to fly out high, the complete look of the fly out effect. And this is what I'm doing. So I use one master preset for low, one for high. Yes. After that, I go back to step one and set the dimmer transition to zero. And the width of the dimmer should be 30%. The same for pan and tilt. And this is again a difference to this uh, flyout in MA or the predefined flyout. The predefined flyout only works in tilt. But I want that it can come from the sides which means I have different things than only tilt. I need a pen as well. So that's why pen and tilt also have the width of 30. And I set the speed for all to the flyout speed, which I define in the top. And now you can see why I use a variable for it, because I don't have to type this speed everywhere. I just know that the speed is correct in every line I use here. Yeah, because you use, after you, this, you use the variable. Yeah. And then after this, I go to the next step, set the transition of the dimmer to 10, and again the speed, and I store a preset, and I really make this definitely a selective preset. This is why I have the slash selected, and I want to override what is before in, because I don't need all this old crap. So if I have, for example, some of my preset fixtures inside there, because I used a different fixture type in the show before, I have a preset fixture inside. And I need to override this, because if I merge it, I get a different amount of fixtures in, and maybe a different position in which cause problems if I use the matrix over it later. Because the matrix make a symmetrical view of all this. And after that, just clear all, switch the preview programmer off, and cook the sequence flyout master. This is the sequence which is laying on the fader. And that's it. Easy. And here in this show file, I just select a world the world with group one, with group two, with group three, four, five, and six. And why only six? Because I defined that only my first six groups should be able to do movement effects. I have to rethink if I have 10 fixtures which have movement effects, then I have to change something in my show file. But yeah. right now, I seldom come up over five or six fixtures which have movement effects. So that's different fixture types. 
Yeah. So, and here in the sequence, you can see I just have this six groups which belong to this preset, what I write before. It's preset 137 from an all pool. And as you can see here, it stores to the preset pool 137. Uh, yes. And that's it. This was a sneak view through my show file. That is a very, very cool and very, very complex show file. I think it is really, really cool. I must say yeah. it is really cool. Uh, I, I think it, it is because we have, you've been talking for almost two hours about your show file, which I think oh, really? is really Is that long? Yeah, no, well, since we, since <laughs> we started our call, so yeah. Um, I really enjoyed looking at it. I really enjoyed seeing all the different uh, ways of doing it and, and, and again, the difference in how people work and the difference in, in, in how people think and how you can actually use the console and its ability to change stuff in the program on the way and change references uh, in uh, effects and, and stuff like that. I think it's amazing. Yeah, it's basically a lot of copy and paste, like, let's say. Yeah. But it has to, I mean, you have to think of it first to, to think of what the, what the options is. What, what can I use this for? How can I make this easier on myself? Yeah, and if someone, for example, just asks, yeah, but how do you deal with it if there are different kind of fixtures, different amount of fixtures? I just created the groups new. Yeah. So my question, after we have, uh, we have been through all this, what would you say to people who say that Granum A3 is uh, unstable and doesn't work? It's definitely wrong. Yeah. Grand May 3 is absolutely stable and um, it is a software which has many, many more features than Grand MA2 has, even now. Of course, still some things are missing, but the advantages of this software is massive, especially to build a show file. And if you have a, sh uh, a show file, and uh, start from this file, uh, it is a massive speed improvement, definitely. So I think the most important thing is that, that people should understand it is not a Grand MA2. Yeah, especially if you are used to um, special workflows with off-timing, for example, it behaves a little bit different. And one really big difference is in Grand MA2, you use a sequence assigned it to an executor, and you do all the settings in the executor. Now you do all this, the settings inside the sequence, and yes. it doesn't matter on which executor you put the sequence, it's working. And yes. this is a huge difference to the workflow, but which is, I was thinking in the beginning, it is tricky to do it and it's, it's not convenient. But after a while, I understand how cool this is, how cool it is to work, and especially that you can, I, I, I call it now copying a sequence, which is basically not copying a sequence, it's assigning one sequence to another sequence. And you can have 10 instances of the same sequence, and you only have to change one sequence, and it change all the 10 sequences. Yeah, but you still need and to, you have can to know have, what you're doing. Yeah, and you can have individual settings in all the sequences. So basically, all my color sequence is one sequence which is just assigned to several other sequences. And I only have to change if I want to change something. So for example, I find a new cool feature in what I want to integrate. I mean, at the moment, there is nothing new. And I would not have to know what else could be done. But in principle, I only have to change this one sequence and it change over all sequences. And yeah. every of these individual sequences can have different settings. It can have a different timing. It cannot com be complete. Oh no, that's wrong. Timing is, will be the same. But it can have all the complete different settings like behavior, how to work with phasers, how to start, how to stop. It can have different 
Speedmasters, all this can be different, but it's still the same sequence. And I can just do it with one click. Yeah. And the same is with recipes. It is such a massive improvement of the workflow to work with a recipe. It is, definitely. But uh, Thomas, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for taking the time to do this. Uh, I'm sure that uh, a lot of people will find uh, your workflow interesting, and uh, it's definitely going to be a long video. I think it's going to be a two-part video, actually. Uh, so okay, we, no so we, break, we, we, we break it in the middle or something. Uh, I really want to thank you, and uh, I hope to, to see you somewhere in real life at some point. Definitely in summer I will be in Germany. Someone in the community want to meet me? Parukaville, Time Lab, you will find me. Okay. See I later. don't know at which time I'm I'm on the stage then, but I will definitely be there. That's all right. I'll see you later, Thomas. Okay, bye bye. Bye bye. So that's it. That is how Thomas works with his show file. I hope you got some value out of this. Uh, be sure to give the video a like and be sure to subscribe to Event Lighting if you want more of this kind of content. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. I mean, there's definitely some gold in here. There's definitely something to learn from, uh, from Thomas. Um, I hope to see you in the next episode on the Event Lighting channel uh, and I uh, hope you enjoyed this one. So uh, see you next time. Bye-bye.